Welcome everybody. Um, today I want to share with you um, specifically about the web client that was introduced in version 10. <clears throat> it's originally started only for HANA customers, but um, now it's also supported for SQL, so it is relevant for really for everybody. Um, it has a really nice user interface. It looks, uh, you know, very modern and new. And this is really um, a big strategy from Business One and SAP perspective is really generally going to the cloud and web client is part of it because we want um, everything to be simple. We want you to log in from anywhere, from uh, whatever device that you have and be able to use Business One to, the, to its fullest. Now, with that said, the web client does contain uh, a subset of the functionality of the standard client of Business One. So it's not a complete duplicate. The reason is that we have to rewrite the code uh, for the web client. So we really have to redo the whole thing. So uh, when you start using the web client, you will see that some things are actually a little bit different. There is some stuff that you can do in the web client and you cannot do in the standard client. Um, and with every version that we uh, release, we're adding more and more functionality to the web client, which eventually we want it to be, um, you know, to, to substitute uh, the standard client. But of course, that's a process because it's, you know, as you know, business one, it's a very robust, um, full, full of functionality. So it's going to take time. But again, uh, let's see what we have today. And, um, you know, and th the idea is that you're going to use it as a hybrid. So some users will use the standard client and some will use the web client. So, um, first of all, it's based on uh, SAP uh, Fiori design principles. You're going to see those tiles that you're kind of familiar with, those KPIs that you can click on and get more information. Um, so, it's, it's very intuitive, very kind of easy uh, for the user experience. Um, you can launch it either from, um, you know, from your desktop computer or your tablet. <clears throat> Currently, it works best with uh, Google Chrome or Firefox, <clears throat> excuse me, web browser. And it can also be launched directly from uh, the Business One application. So if you're, um, you know, if you prefer to do it this way, you can do it. Otherwise, you can just save your URL link. Um, on your Chrome and just launch it. As I mentioned, the web client is available for both HANA and um, SQL. And the reason is, is that the way we actually built the web client is that it's really an application that is connected to Business One through the service layer. And the service layer is the API that, that is used for uh, HANA. Um, um, installation. However, in version 10, we also um, enable the service layer to be supported by SQL. So that's how we are actually now able to support um, uh, web client on SQL. So that, that's kind of good news all around because um, um, we're actually consuming our own technology, basically. So it's also a good way for us to improve the service layer because we have to make sure that the web client is working appropriately. Um, so you may ask, is it exactly the same? It's not. Um, the main difference is the analytics, and you will see some in the demo um, that there is embedded analytics that is using um, HANA models and views from the HANA database, which we don't have in SQL. However, you can create some analytics with the, the SQL version, and I will talk about that later. Um, so what can you do in the web client? Uh, at the top of the screen, you're gonna see the groups and you will see different areas that are actually supported. So you're gonna see sales where you can create quotations and orders and deliveries and invoices. Uh, on the purchasing side, you can view purchasing documents. 
um, on the uh, business partners and items. You can create and update business partners and items. You can see notifications and you create and view activities. Uh, you would also notice you have access to user-defined tables and objects and also user-defined fields within screens. So part of the analytics uh, of the uh, web client is, um, is just using those really nice, sophisticated uh, charting capabilities that you see a snapshot here. Um, and it is, as I mentioned, is based on the HANA views and those are pre-delivered with, with Business One. Um, however, you can take any of them of the, those tiles and charts and modify them, add filtering, um, change the measures and dimensions. So it's very, very flexible to use it to your own needs. So recent features just kind of goes to show how in every version or now we call it feature pack, uh, we include more uh, we support more functionality. For example, in the last couple of feature pack, um, we included the option to copy to and copy from. So you can take an order, copy to delivery and so on. Um, you can preview and print returns and credit memos, which you couldn't do before. Um, you can preview and print AP documents. You can um, create and update business partners and master data. There is multi-branches support. You can um, add freight charges to documents. Um, you can enter exchange rate in the web client. Uh, we support the relationship map that you can now kind of view, which you know you can do it in obviously in standard, standard business one, you can do it now in the web client. Um, you can create activities, uh, see notifications from activities, and you can um, use the analytics uh, and um, use the advanced analytics a uh, content and editor on only on the HANA side of things. There is also enterprise search in um, in uh, in the web client in the HANA version of it. Uh, it supports single sign-on, it supports authorizations and data ownership, meaning uh, obviously whatever law, uh, user that you use to log in is, um, is uh, the, the, all the authorizations and data, data ownership is applied. So, uh, you know, users cannot create an invoice if they're not authorized to. We also added approval process and draft, uh, UDFs, UDTs and objects. Um, yeah, and all the rest of the stuff you can see here, those are only recent features. So it's kind of encouraging because every, every feature pack, we add a lot of functionality. When we look at the roadmap um, for the web client, we want to extend some uh, business logic, um, extend, you know, add more to sales and purchasing, add sales opportunities add uh, service calls and as well payments. Those are again, not supported currently. On the analytics and reporting and printing, um, you know, extend the analytics, add more analytics, uh, add more reporting content out of the box, uh, allow more design capabilities so you can create reports from, from scratch. Um, and provide better uh, integration. So right now, if you wanted to, um, you know, modify or add functionality on your own to the web client. Um, it's not supported, but it's it's coming uh, pretty soon. So if you want to add your own functionality to it, so you will be able to do that. Okay. So um, now let's go ahead and kind of take a look at. Um, at the web client. And I'm actually going to start the demo in the standard client, and then I'm gonna to switch to the web client and I'm gonna actually run a video and Clara, if there's any <laughs> technical issues, let me know. Welcome to the SAP Business One demonstration. I'm logged in as Bill Levine, which is the sales manager at OEC Computers. As a sales manager, I can see all the important widgets that I need to perform my daily job, 
such as KPIs, dashboards, shortcuts, reports, and so on. I notice a new message from Jason Butler regarding a request for approving a document. I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see that this request came from Jason regarding a sales order and required my approval. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the order and I see it's quite large. I want to be able to see more about MaxiTech, the customer, his history and his current status. I'm going to use the customer 360 view to get that information. I can see it's been doing pretty well uh, this year. Although previous years were better, but hey, no surprise, this is 2020. Let's look at his receivables, see how much he owes me. You can see he's over his credit limit, he owes me some money. However, I see his debt is better by 51% from last month. So that means he's actually uh, paying up his debts. So after uh, checking a few things, I feel comfortable to go ahead and approve the sales order. Now we're switching to Jason Butler, which is actually using the web client. The web client is just a web interface for Business One that is perfect for salespeople and others that are on the go and need to access it from anywhere, anytime. Immediately I see a message right here in the notifications of a document generation that was approved. Now, Jason is connected and seeing all the uh, customized uh, tiles and cards uh, in his home screen, but he can make some changes if he wanted to. For example, Jason doesn't want to see the notification in the home screen. So I'm going to uh, actually deactivate that and only um, and only keep the notification as an icon. And I'm still going to get this little uh, indicator that I have new notifications. In addition, I would like to add the documents um, in approval to the home screen. So I can very quickly log in and see the ones that are approved. Another way of doing that is simply edit my home screen where I can remove tiles. I can add additional tiles. I can even add groups and those groups will show up up here at the top area. Let's go ahead and exit the edit mode and now I can keep on working. Jason is ready to take a look at documents in approval. So basically all the documents for Jason Butler, you can see the originator is the current user. And we can see a few orders, a few quotations, some approved, some already generated, some are pending. I'm going to go ahead and make some changes to the table using these settings. I'm going to go ahead and move the approval status to the end. And I'm going to get rid of uh, draft I updated by. Um, and maybe the document entry and save this. And now I get a better view of all my uh, documents. In addition, I can go ahead and apply a filter to this list. For example, I only want to see the approved ones. I can go ahead and see that I have three orders and one quotation. And I'm going to select all of them to add them to the system. 
and they will turn from draft to actual documents and the draft will be closed. I'm done with this process. So I'm going to head back to the home screen and take a look at sales orders using the sales order KPI. I'm going to get a full list of uh, sales orders that were uh, that are exist in the database. You can go ahead and sort them in a descending order to see the newest one first. Using this screen, I can do a couple of things. I can apply an action on multiple orders. For example, um, these three orders should be closed or canceled. So I can very quickly do that from this window. The orders I just created, I can go ahead and preview them. And it will generate um, a nice crystal report with the templates that is assigned to those orders where I can download, print, or email them to my customer. Taking this list of orders, I can also uh, download it to Excel, or I can also turn it into a chart. So at this point, the chart is just a point or a dot here that shows me how many orders I have, but I'm going to go ahead and make some modifications. For example, one of the measures would be um, customer code or name. And the other one can be, for example, um, the status of the order. So show me open versus closed. Now this doesn't help me much, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to a stacked column chart. And that's much better. I see the number of orders uh, open and closed for uh, my customers. You can go ahead and zoom in and uh, clicking on a particular customer, I can see the details underneath that uh, section of the chart. I can even highlight a section of my chart and view the details in the section highlighted. I'm going to change the record count to something more significant, like document total. And now it's actually going to show me some numbers that I would like to see. Now I want to see instead of status, I want to actually look at a sales employee in this case. But I don't want to see it this way. I'm going to change it to a heat map. And a heat map, um, it's a really nice type of chart that shows me, in this case, um, my sales employees and my customers and based on the color I see which one basically sold more to whom. Um, at this point I'm kind of happy with this um, chart so what I can do is go ahead and save this view so I can use it in the future. So I can just identify all sales orders um, by sales employee. I can set it even as default which means that whenever I open the sales order KPI, it's going to open up with this view uh, and public so others can use it. So let's go ahead and, and save it. And it's right here, I can now switch between the views of the same KPI. Finally, since I kind of like it, I can go ahead and save it as a tile as well to my home screen. can identify uh, the group, so I'm going to keep it uh, at my home. And now if I go back to home screen, here is the new uh, tile that I added, and it's going to open up immediately on the view that I created. So remember the sales orders I created, let's take it to the next step and create a delivery. I'm going to identify uh, the customer, my uh, customer MaxiTech. And I'm going to copy from sales orders. I can see the list, uh, just making sure it's uh, 
the last three orders that I'm copying. And all the information is copied over. I can go ahead and remove certain rows, duplicate or copy rows to another document if needed. Going to logistics, I have two choices to edit the existing address or define a new one. And by the way, there's also integration with Google Maps to show me the location on the map if I needed to. In this case, I'm going to define a new address. And I can go ahead and select whether to update the business partner with this new address to save it for next time. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, give it an ID, home. And save the address. I'm now ready to add the delivery document to the system. I'm going to open the customer master data, MaxiTech here, because I want to take a look at the address I created earlier when I created the delivery. So I'm going to go and edit, switch to the addresses section, and I can see the uh, home address I created earlier. I'm going to go ahead and copy this ship to to the build to address. So I have it now in both. So this kind of saves me the time from um, creating it separately. To finish the process, I'm going to go ahead and copy the delivery to an invoice. There's not much um, I need to change over here so, and save it to the system. Finally, I'm going to take a quick look at the relationship map, which is really the whole flow of documents that I've just created when I started from a quotation to a sales order to three delivery, three orders into the delivery and an invoice. I'm going to look at the notifications again and sort it by priority. I see I have a, a high priority notification to send promotional items to MaxiTech mouse pads. So looking into that, I can see it's an activity I created where I set up a reminder for myself to um, to send those promotional items today at six. So now I'm not really sure what kind of mouse pads I need to send. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the enterprise search. Uh, and the enterprise search is just an easy search uh, engine that looks throughout the system, whether it's a specific um, object or in the entire system for whatever text I type in here. So I'm going to actually type in um, the word mouse and search through all. Now I can further filter the list um, by a specific object. In this case, I'm just looking for some items. And now all the items that have mouse in there somewhere in the master data are going to show up here. I do see this mouse pad, but I'm not entirely certain that this is the one I'm supposed to send. Therefore, I'm going to actually send those results as an email and I'm going to send it to Bill, my manager. And I'm uh, and the system generates a link that Bill is going to get in his inbox where if he clicks on it, 
it's going to open up the web client directly in that search results that I created earlier. So I can go ahead and ask Bill what to do next and which items to send. Using the SAP Business One web client, you can use the robust analytics that is embedded in the uh, software. There are many uh, charts and reports that are pre-delivered. However, you can take any of those and apply changes to them, save it, and just use the ones that you prefer. You have uh, different kinds of tiles here. Some that uh, contain multiple cards or multiple charts within them, and some that are individual charts. I'm going to take a look at the sales analytics um, by row overview. I can see this tile contain many cards with different information on it. The filtering can be applied to the whole tile. For example, if I would like to add a credit memo as well, it's going to apply to everything underneath that tile. This specific tile has uh, looking back three years from today. And I can add additional um, filtering if needed. For example, I want to see only sales for printers. This will apply to all the cards in the tile. I can go ahead and drill down into particular cards and whatever changes I make here will only apply to that card. In this example, I have a pre-existing uh, view that compares Q2 numbers of this year compared to last year by customer code. So I can very easily see that I had in this example, more active customers in Q2, however, they purchased less from me. These cards can also be shared and saved as a tile to my home screen or any other group in the system, really giving me a holistic view of my company's information using all those built-in pre-delivered uh, reports. Okay, so um, this was a kind of a quick overview of the web client. Um, I think I tried to cover most of the functionality, but there is more. There's more things you can do, um, you know, especially around the analytics. And there's other objects that I didn't cover, like items and customers. But the point is really to have that uh, available for you for, and if you find users that the functionality is sufficient at this point, uh, they can simply use the web client um, and not having to log in to the standard client. All right, so I would like to open it up for any questions. Um, Clara, back to you. Thank you, Edith. Thank you. The presentation went very well after that first uh, <laughs> <laughs> glitch, yeah. Minutes, but. Uh, Everything else worked fine. Uh, one of our customers is asking if we are going to be sending this video and the demo that you shared. Yes, we will. Uh, while we wait for a couple of more questions to come in, I want uh, to, am, am I sharing my screen already? Uh, yes, you are. Okay. I just want you all to, to invite you all to join us in our next presentation, which will start at 15 minutes past noon. And the link to register to that presentation, if you haven't done so already, is being shared right now on our chat. And uh, and uh, now we can we can go to the questions. And um, I'll be reading them for you if you want, Edith, so that everybody um, can hear them. I can I see them, so I can read them as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, if, I mean, doing? yeah. Um, so the first one is from Nicolas. What does security look like for this web application compared to um, SAP being on a remote uh, server? Mm -hmm. um, it 
It's really kind of the same, I would say. Um, you can apply some security certificates if you want it, but as it is, it's just simply uh, using your user ID and your password and, and your license that is assigned to you uh, as you log in um, to the system. Uh, from Paula, can you uh, add approved draft as sales orders in bulk in regular SAP? Uh, good question. Also, to add drafts in web client, do you have to be the originator of the draft or can someone else do it? Um, <clears throat> so first of all, it's true that you cannot add uh, drafts in bulk uh, in, in uh, business one standard client, and that is one thing that is kind of nice that you can do things in bulk. If you notice, I could do, I can add multiple uh, orders, drafts at the same time. I can print multiple at the same time. I can close, cancel at the same time. So that's kind of um, a little bit of a bonus where, when using the uh, web client. In terms of who can add them, it depends on the settings that you have in the system. Um, actually, in version 10, we've added a new checkbox that says that originators, sorry, that um, approvers, the, the person that approves it, or can also update or add the draft. So it really depends on your restriction, but generally the answer is yes. I mean, if you allow all these restrictions, then, um, then also the, not only the originators can add the drafts. On the relationship uh, map <clears throat> in the web client, can you limit what a user can see? We would like our salespeople not to be able to see cost. And when a purchase order is linked to a sales order, they're able to see it. Is this the same on the web client or different? Um, I actually don't know, I need to check. So generally you're saying that um, that the user is not authorized to see uh, the purchase orders, but on the relationship map, they do see it. Uh, if I understand correctly, then probably it's, it's wrong, but um, I will check that for you and let you know. Okay, um, so next one from Laura. Uh, just to be sure, this new version changed all the graphics. Uh, all the graphics. The web client is my regular client. So that's a good question. Um, not really. Um, you still have the standard client. It just looks a little bit different. Like it has a new uh, skin. And the skin of the standard client looks kind of the same as the web client. And that's why it may have been confusing. If you remember in the beginning of the video, I showed the standard client, um, but you're still gonna have both, um, you know, web client is optional. Um, we just changed the skin. It just looks kind of more modern and more pretty. I mean, you can also, by the way, decide what skin you want if you don't like that skin, so you can change it. Okay, the demos and um, especially the demo, yeah, I'm gonna share it with uh, Clara and she can definitely send it to you. Um, are these graphs and reports only on the web client or on the regular client as well? <clears throat> so those graphs are on the web client, we created them, created them especially for the web client. Um, and um, they're not in the standard client. Uh, with that said, you have different, um, you know, you have the ability in the standard client using the pervasive analytics, if you're familiar with that, to create dashboards and KPIs that are very similar. What you cannot do in the standard client is having that one big tile that includes multiple charts. Uh, in the standard client, it's it's one one chart at a time. So yeah, I mean the the web client um, charts and graphs are a little bit more robust than the standard. Can you do inventory transactions or counting? Um, on the web client, um, not yet. No, you can only kind of see um, 
you can see items, you can see uh, stock and stuff like that, but you cannot do any inventory transactions yet. Um, it's it's on in the on the plan. I don't know if counting would be probably not. Probably maybe later in the stage, but you might we might add some inventory transactions um, in the web client soon. Is it? Possible, wait, let me see that I did skip. Okay, is it possible to use multiple tabs on the web client? <clears throat> and how do you do it? I try to right click and open a new tab functionality. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, yeah, you can't right click and open a new tab, but some depend what you're doing. It opens a new tab. For example, if you notice when I open, when I drill down to the business partner, um, it opened it in a new tab in Chrome. Uh, also, when I preview uh, documents, um, but you can definitely like duplicate the tab and then just you know continue. If you want to kind of save what you have on one tab uh, and just duplicate it and continue to work on another tab, it's not going to interfere. But yeah, I know what you mean. We don't have that, like, um, I guess it's mainly kind of relevant when you um, when you want to open a new document, for example, then it opens in the same home screen. So it you cannot just say open a new tab. Um, can you be signed in to normal remote access and also web client at the same time? Yes. What's the main difference between the mobile apps, <clears throat> excuse me, and the web client? <clears throat> um, we need to look at the functionality. Right now we have two mobile apps, one for sales and one for service. So for example, all the service um, functionality in the mobile app um, is only in the mobile app. Uh, it's not yet supported by the web client. Um, but for example, in the mobile app for sales, I, I don't believe you can create invoices uh, and do all those analytics. So you kind of need to put them side by side and see web client, I can do more, um, but maybe in, in the service um, uh, mobile app, I can do stuff that I cannot do in the web client. Um, so th there are differences for sure. And really the, the aspiration at the moment, although the mobile apps are also being um, you know, updated and added functionality, the main focus from SAP right now is investing in the web client and including more functionality in the web client. Indeed, maybe I can read the, the, a couple of next questions. So maybe you can drink a little bit of water. I want to oh, give no, you- I'm fine. <laughs> I only see one more. I don't know if you see- Yeah, we have, we have a couple of, of questions also in the chat. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so- um, Water. One of the questions, but I think it was repeated. Uh, so someone is asking, uh, what is your title at SAP? And it's giving you a great presentation. He loved your presentation and Thank probably you. he didn't catch your title at SAP. Well, I'm called, I have different titles that keep changing it, but, mm -hmm. but from my perspective, I'm a product expert for business one. So I'm, I'm very technical. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not a salesperson. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I basically, I, I know the product in and out in terms of the core, the functionality, in terms of the um, platform, the infrastructure, and I work with partners um, in the East region of the United States. There is um, two more of me in the in the in North America I work with the east uh, partners and just you know helping supporting them training us you know education stuff like that okay great the other question on the chat is is the web client available across all of the other applications inventory financials etc well no um, you know it's very it's limited right now as you notice it's mainly sales and I can view purchasing. Uh, I cannot create a purchase document yet. Um, it's mainly, again, sales, business partners, activities, um, items, these type of, of things. 
Okay. Okay. And the last question is this very specific question coming from Floor. Uh, she the, she says hello Edith. I have some different processes and PDFs that have been changed to apply for Mexico. All these modifications will need to be done again if we upgrade to the new version. No, not at all. I mean, what the system does, it's using your default templates that you have that you have defined in the system. And it's just kind of pulling that crystal template into the web client and using that one. So you're not going to have to do anything. I mean, whether you use web client or not, those will stay. Okay. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much, Edith. I think we don't have any more questions. Um, it was great. And uh, don't forget to join us later in, this, in the second session that Edith is going to share more uh, functionality enhancements that she didn't include in this presentation because it was focused on, on, on the web client. Um, remember that we have a raffle. If you, if you complete the survey that it's going to be showing on your screen uh, as soon as we finish this session, that will give you a new opportunity uh, to win an iPad Air. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Edith, very much for your time. Thank you, Clara. I will now go and restart my computer so this doesn't happen <laughs> at one o'clock. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, 